God. Well, we are going to have a wonderful Sunday. We're already having a great Sunday, uh, but I'm excited about this. I want to uh, re-emphasize, hey, At The Movies is coming up, and you're going to love it. Uh, and let me, let me just tell you, this is going to be amazing. I want to thank all the volunteers that are building. It is crazy uh, in our buildings, and I'm excited for you to see it. You're going to love it. We have the best team. I can't believe the stuff that they build and what, how dedicated everyone is. Uh, and the kids are going to have a blast. Right, Claire? She says yes. Uh, it's going to be um, just off the hook. And, and listen, we, we're going to preach the gospel. We don't preach movies. We preach the gospel. Uh, but if you read your Bible, Jesus was a storyteller. And Jesus used illustrations to emphasize what, uh, what God was saying to his people. And we're going to use these stories to emphasize what God is saying from the Bible. Uh, so bring your friends. Bring your family. Be praying for it. And uh, talk to your regional pastor and say, I need to get involved. How can I get involved? And they will be so excited that you did that. Uh, I want to welcome the Reverend Dr. Ian Wu all the way here to Region 78 in Topayo. He's undercover. Uh, helped pioneer our church in Fukuoka. And uh, Masa and Rio are here from Fukuoka. So welcome, you guys. Uh, Masa, world-famous interpreter, once interpreted for me, I believe, in uh, Fukuoka. It's really nice to see you guys here in Singapore. Uh, we love Fukuoka, love Japan, uh, love the ramen, but love the people more. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Thank you for Ichiran. We appreciate it. Um, listen, a few weeks ago, I started a series of messages called Grow. Everyone shout, Grow. grow. Come on, are you with me today? Everyone shout, Grow. And uh, today, I want to continue. Last week, of course, Pastor Brandon Cormier was with us, uh, and that was super powerful. And, uh, but I want to pick up uh, part two of our series called Grow. I believe God is going to speak to you. We've been talking about the Bible's mandate to each of us to grow and why we as a church believe that it's so important to grow. Not, not only that, but why we provide so many avenues and opportunities to grow uh, because every one of us as believers should be growing in our relationship with God. It is not stagnant. It is not just uh, one and done. I just, okay, I said a prayer one time or I went to church once upon a time or I just come on Sunday and then I go back to my normal life that there should actually be growth in my life. And so a couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, preparing our hearts to grow. And, and the issue that sometimes our hearts face, conditions, there's things that crowd in that make it difficult for God's word and his will really to grow in our life. But God's will is that you would grow. God's will is that you and I would bear fruit in our life. God desires for us to grow. And uh, you can see this all through creation. Healthy things grow, right? Uh, if you've ever... Uh, been expecting as a couple or known someone that's pregnant, you know, they go for checkups all the time. And one of the first things they'll do on the checkup is they will measure the baby. They'll measure the baby and they want to know, is it growing? And if the baby's not growing, it's a cause for concern because they're going normally, if it's healthy, if everything's right, it should be growing. Well, spiritually in my life, whether it's in my faith, whether it's in the fruit of the spirit, whether it's in my knowledge of God, uh, whether it, it, it's in my relationship with him or even with relationships with others around me, I should be growing and progressing in my life as a believer. G God saved us. How many of you are saved today? Come on. He saved us, but he's still working on us. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago. That's, the Bible uh, calls that sanctification. It is the process of us becoming more like Jesus. So God accepts us just like we are. And he says, man, you're accepted you are righteous, uh, you are holy, uh, you're not just Joseph, you're Saint Joseph, uh, you know, you're, you're a saint, and, and God accepts you and goes, man, you're totally holy, and, and he declares that about our lives, and aren't, aren't you so glad God declares us righteous? It is that justification and declaration of righteousness that lets us come into the presence of God, but at the same time, God is working on us because how many know, even though he declares me righteous, not everything I do is righteous all the time. And God says, okay, I, I'm going to allow you in, but I, I'm going to keep changing you. And work, I'm actually going to make you look more and more like Jesus. And I want to encourage all of us today, as we get into this message, these few weeks together that we share, I want you to determine in your heart that this year is going to be a growth year in your life. Come on. Everyone will say, this year... I'm going to grow. Look at someone next to you and say, this year, I'm going to grow spiritually. 
okay? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a growth year. Hey, listen, God wants to speak to me. God wants to use me. God wants to change me. God wants there to be a growth in my life and for this to be a growth year. Somebody shout amen. amen. And I want to I wanna differentiate this because growth in God's kingdom is not simply knowledge. I, I do think there's a tendency in our generation to run after knowledge. If I just had another key, if I just knew a little more, if I just went to one more seminar, had one more class, read one more book, watched one more podcast, and there's nothing wrong with that, but growth in the kingdom is not just knowledge. It's actually what the Bible calls fruitfulness. And so if you plant a plant and you see it grow up and, and it's, it's a vegetable or fruit plant, you're looking for the fruit from it. You're like happy that it grows. You're happy it's got leaves. If I plant an apple tree, great, there's a tree. What I really want is the fruit. I really want the apples on that tree. And God says, actually, fruitfulness or change in our life, that is, the, is what growth looks like in the kingdom of God. And so I want you to look at this scripture with me, 2 Corinthians chap, uh, chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And it says this, and we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Everyone shout transformed. transformed. Okay, you mumbled it, but now shout it. Everyone shout transformed. transformed. Being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. He says, we, with unveiled face, God's taken the veil off, the barrier between us, our understanding of who God is and being able to see him for really what he is. Now we behold the glory of the Lord and we are being transformed into that image from one degree of glory to another. The New Living Translation translates it this way. It says, so all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Isn't that great? This is the promise of God for growth and transformation in our lives. That as you and I look toward God, he transforms us to be more and more like Jesus. That is an amazing promise. I love that it's a promise, and it's not just a commandment. I mean, God does command us to grow, but that's like a heavy burden. How do I suddenly become more like Jesus? But God promises as I engage in his process, as I keep my eyes on Jesus, as I engage with the spirit, he's actually at work changing me to be more like him. And, and so, so whether you feel it or not, I'm here to tell you today, once you put your faith in Jesus, God wants to work in your life. You are not excluded. God's not done with you. God hasn't forgotten you. Even if you made mistakes along the way, listen, God's will and desire is he wants to change us into the image of Jesus. He is not done with us yet. And th this verse is so powerful. It says, we all, with unveiled face, all, everyone say all. all. You know what that word means in the Greek? It actually means all. <laughs> Deep, I know. Is that right, Dr. Susan Comiskey? It means all. We all, in other words, check this out. Everyone is invited. Where's my young people at? Come on, give me a shout. Where's my old people at? Oh, I didn't think you'd admit it. I'm impressed. Where's my middle-aged people at? Some of you aren't sure which group you're in. It's all right. God's working on you. God's working on you. Some of you heard the young adult retreat announcement last week, and you were offended. You thought, I thought I was a young adult. No, you're not. You're an old adult. Welcome. All right. We, we all, with unveiled face, it, it, he invites all of us, every believer, everyone that puts their faith in Jesus, this promise is for your life. This promise is it's the promise for us here in Singapore. It's a promise for everyone in Japan. It's a promise for everyone in the Pacific, in Timor-Leste, in Africa, in Europe, in America. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord, he says, hey, I'm going to do a work in you, and I'm going to make you more like Jesus. Amazing. He says, as we behold him, as we look at him, as we, the word is like looking at a mirror. So as we look at Jesus, as we also reflect Jesus, we're transformed. I like he doesn't just, it's not just a change, a shift, transform something from the inside out. A metamorphosis that happens from the inside of us. He makes us, in other words, into a new thing. 
Not just a better version of the old you, but a brand new thing. Brand new desires. Brand new thoughts. Brand new understanding. Brand new faith. Brand new confidence. Come on. Brand new courage where there used to be fear. A, a, a brand new uh, a, a trust in the name of the Lord where there used to be anxiety and stress and, and worry. God says, I'm doing something new. And he says, I do it from glory to glory, from one degree of glory to another. And he describes this that actually it's like in your walk with God, it's almost like there's levels that you, that you will reach stages in your life. And he goes, I'm going to move you from stage to stage to stage to stage. I'm going to bring you up to this level of faith. And then I'm going to keep working on you. And I want you to bring you to the next level of faith. I'm going to keep working on you. I want to bring you to the next level of looking like Jesus. And then you become really excited. You go, man, I look like Jesus. And then suddenly you look at him a little more and you realize that part of me doesn't look like Jesus. And God goes, okay, I'm going to bring you to another level of looking like Jesus. Come on, are, are you with me? This is what it means to walk with God. God's not a God of condemnation. When I come to him, God accepts me. He loves me. I don't feel condemnation. I feel fully accepted. But as he accepts me, I realize, man, there's parts of my life that don't match up. And that's God working on me, saying, I want to bring you to another level. And so I shouldn't look the same, think the same, pray the same. I shouldn't act the same. I shouldn't believe the same as I did last month, last year. Come on, in the last season, God wants to do a work in my life. And as a pastor, uh, listen, I can give you one strong encouragement. Don't get stuck. Just don't get stuck. You don't have to try to prove something to anybody. You don't have to try to impress anyone else. You don't have to try to be someone you're not, but don't get stuck. Say, God, I, I want you to keep changing me from one level to another, from one degree of glory to another. Make my life more like Jesus. Change me from the inside out. And, and I want to talk today about the challenge of growth because there is a challenge to this process. Good things, things that are worth it, are usually not easy. They, there is usually a challenge to them. Have you ever gone to McDonald's? You say, I would like a double cheeseburger, and immediately they hand it to you, and you're like, that didn't seem challenging enough for you to make. Why do you just have these, like, already done? Like, this is the difference between good food and fast food. You wait a little bit for good food. Fast food just comes out. There's no challenge to it, and you're like, what's in this burger? I'm not, I'm not really sure. There's a, there's a challenge. What is the challenge of growth? And, and listen, Paul writes in this scripture, we with unveiled face behold the glory of the Lord and we're being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to another. I want you to think about what he says and I, I want you to think about these three challenges today. I'm going to do my best to unpack this uh, for us. I believe this is going to help you. So he, he, here's, here's what he says. First of all, there's a challenge of consistency. The challenge of growth is a challenge of consistency. With unveiled face, we behold the glory of the Lord. We constantly are looking at, we consistently are looking at the glory of Jesus. We are looking to Jesus, the Bible says. And, and he says, as we consistently look at Jesus, God consistently changes us. So the challenge is actually in the consistency of us keeping up our walk with God keeping engaged in this process. And, and, and what that means is that you and I need a determination to keep growing. I, I don't just need a determination to have grown in the past. I need a determination to keep growing, to keep being consistent in the things that God has led me in. And, and I think that that can be actually more challenging than we realize in church because we gather once a week we hear a message. Uh, if you're in growth track, come on, where's my growth track people? Oh, okay, whatever. Uh, I'm not sure what they're teaching you in there. All right, but you, you go to growth track, uh, teacher, teacher, you're like, yes, okay, that's good. Right? And we come here, the preacher preaches, there's worship. You go, oh man, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna do this, this is awesome. And, and the challenge is not in coming and being inspired. The challenge is, am I actually, do I have a conviction about those things? So that I'm not just inspired for a moment, but consistently I'm actually walking those things out. Being inspired is not difficult. 
being inspired is not hard. And so, in, in other words, if there's a, someone comes and preaches about giving, I mean, I can get inspired and respond and give, but that's not the challenge. The challenge is, am I growing in giving in my life? If someone comes and, and preaches to me about faith, I can get inspired and go, okay, I'm going to believe God bigger. I get inspired. But then on Monday, when a challenge comes, when a bad report comes, when something discourages me, the, the issue is, do I have a conviction and a growth of faith, or am I just inspired in faith? And, and, and this is the challenge. He says, we all with unveiled face, beholding, present tense, this is what we are doing. We are looking, we are beholding, we are watching, we are thinking about Jesus, we are meditating on him, our eyes are on him, we are following him, looking at him, and running our race after him. And what he's describing is a regular pattern of intentional engagement. Consistency is a regular pattern of intentional engagement. And so if I'm going to grow in my life, this is the challenge. Do I have a regular pattern of, of intentional engagement with the Lord? Do I have a regular pattern of intentional engagement with the Word? Do I have a regular pattern of intentional engagement in worship? Yes, I have those things in my life, but is there consistency so that God can do His work inside of my heart? Uh, I, it's not a matter of me just getting inspired to come to church once in a while. Do I have consistency? Am I growing? In, yes, I'm regular. <laughs> I'm here. I'm consistent in my prayer, in my faith, in my worship, in my engagement. God, I'm not just inspired. I'm working on consistency. Are, it, does that make sense today? This is the challenge. You know, um, you know you'll find that a lot of times people identify, if you go, I, I watch a lot of nature documentaries, I'm a little bit crazy about it, and, and you'll find that people will go and they'll be able to find animals, it always blows my mind, how do you find these animals in the wild, because they have a regular pattern, they go, oh, this snake lives under this kind of rock, this lizard, they're found at this place, uh, this bird, this is the kind of environment, and if you know the environment, you can find the animal. I remember uh, many years ago, I was, I was scuba diving, and the dive guide showed me this little crab. It was, it, they call it an orangutan crab. I'll show you a picture of it. And, and this is an orangutan crab. I think we have it somewhere. It's coming. Here it is. This, this is the orangutan crab. I'm in right in front of it. Uh, and it's called an orangutan crab because it's hairy. It looks like some of the men here. All right. And it's hairy. And the dive guide showed it to me, and I was like, wow, that's incredible. And I was like, that, how do these guys find these crabs? And then many years later, I was, I was diving with somebody else, and he found an orangutan crab. And then, you know, we found one again later, and I thought, I realized, wait a minute, all these crabs are sitting on the same little anemone. And, and I go, oh, I get it. You find the anemone, you find the crab. And so later, this is a, I found this crab. This is my photo, actually. So I took a photo of this little hairy guy, and I found it. I was very proud of myself. I, I was like, wow, National Geographic, sign me up, you know. <laughs> but, but you know why? There's a regular pattern. He always shows up on this anemone. He always shows up on this kind of coral. And, and so if I know that, there's a regular pattern, and because he's so consistent, I can consistently find him. And in your spiritual life and my spiritual life, here's, here's the question. Do I have a regular pattern? Do I have a regular pattern of spiritual engagement? I know some of us have regular patterns of where we sit. I can always find Shy Song right there. <laughs> right? There's some people, I, I know exactly where you are. But how about spiritually in my life? Hey, when things get tough, what's my regular pattern? What's my regular pattern? When I'm facing a crisis in my life, what's my regular pattern? When there's a challenge and I'm stretched beyond my limit, what's my consistent, regular pattern? And the challenge of growth is, look, I've, I've got to develop consistency in my life to approach Jesus and let him form these habits in my heart that are actually changing me. So signing up for Grow Track is not the issue. Attending actually is the issue. Oof got quiet. Listen, wanting to be kind to your spouse is not the issue. Actually being kind to your spouse is the issue. Okay, it's very, very quiet. And, and in your life, and my life, I'm going to move on before you start persecuting me. In, in your life and my life, as we grow, I, God inspires me, does a work in me. I see Jesus. And you know what? I think the enemy will give you as many excuses as you need to give up on consistency and break that pattern of growth in your life, but that is not God's will. 
That is not God's will. Peter looks at Jesus. He says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and just a couple chapters later, he says, man, I'm going to die for you. And Jesus says, actually, you're going to deny me. You're going to deny me. And he goes, Peter, but listen, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith wouldn't fail. He goes, Peter, you're inspired. You're growing. But you know what? The enemy's coming at you, going to give you excuses. But I'm praying this wouldn't disconnect you. You're actually going to come back and you're going to grow. You're going to, you're going to get back in the pattern of consistency to grow. So, so Paul talks about the challenge of consistency. Is this all right for everybody? Secondly, the second challenge is the challenge of change. I think this is maybe the hardest one. This is the challenge of change. Everyone say change. He says, we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Actually, both these words, we're beholding, we're being transformed. They're both present tense. We're, we're beholding, we're being transformed at the same time. So as we behold, we are transformed. It's not you behold long enough and God transforms you. There's this thing that happens in the spirit that as I engage with God, he's changing me. Have you ever been discouraged and you went to pray and as you're praying, God's joy and comfort fills your heart? And it's like, I'm not even done praying yet for what I need God to do so I won't be discouraged and I already feel encouraged. As I behold, God is transforming me. It's this active thing. And he's, in other words, he's working in my heart. And so as I see God's image, the glory of God, as I, as I think about Jesus and I read his word and I see who he is, but I, I also begin to see myself. I see the parts of my life that don't match up with who he is. I see the parts that don't look like exactly like Jesus. And those are the parts God's going, I want to change that. I want to change that. And I want to tell you, it is in God's presence that you and I are transformed. It is in this, this, this uh, decision to engage with God, to look at him, to allow him to search my heart, to allow him to change my life, and in that moment, God will actually do it. Maybe you've come today and you're looking for a shift. You're actually looking for a change. You're praying for something, a miracle but you might not understand where the change is gonna come from. Maybe you think the change is someone's gonna declare something over your life. Maybe you think the change is something that's gonna to happen to you, but oftentimes the change is something that is gonna happen within you by the Holy Spirit. And God wants to come and do a new thing in your heart and a new thing in your mind. Are you with me today? It, it, when God changes me, when I behold him and he transforms me, it means I'm putting away some things and I'm never going back to them again. He's changed me. I put away these thoughts, I'm not going back to those thoughts again. One level to another level. It means that I'm adopting some new things in my life. I'm not, I don't look like that anymore. I don't think like that anymore. I don't act like that anymore. And so you and I need a new pattern many times. That's why we look to Jesus. That's why I need to get in the presence of God to say, God, I, I want to just look at you and see a new pattern, something different that you want to do in and through me. I don't want to just keep doing the same old thing again and again and again and again. I want something brand new to happen in my heart and in my life. Are you with me? Are you with me? God does work in our lives and hearts in supernatural ways. And many times we just come into his presence today in worship, today in his presence. God wants to work on our heart. God wants to change things. And I, I sense him speaking to me today as we just join in worship together, just things that he's saying to my life, things he's adjusting in my perspective. I go, okay, God, please, please do that. I, I don't want to remain the same. I want to meet with you. I want to be more like you. Romans uh, chapter 12 says it this way. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you. Did, did you hear this? Yeah. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Look at someone next to you. Make them uncomfortable. Just look at them in the eyes and say, will you let God transform you? Some of you have been waiting to say this a long time. I'm giving you permission right now. Would you please? Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's your child. Will you please let God transform you? Please. He says, let God transform you into a new person. Listen, by changing the way I think. Then you'll know God's will, good, pleasing, and perfect. You know what the issue is? God wants to come and change us, and the, the hindrance is 
almost all of us would go like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we need to change. Yes, you're right, Pastor Jeremy. Yes, God needs to change. Yes, we should open our hearts and do this. But then many times when God comes to change us, our first thought is, but I don't need to change. But I, I did, I, I'm not... I don't need to shift that in my life. I don't think it's the season to do this. I don't think I need that. And maybe something is confronted in our heart. I don't need to apologize. It's that person's fault, not my, person, not my fault, right? What is that? It's, a, it's an issue in the way that I think. And that's why the Bible says God wants to transform us, but he starts here with understanding, oh, man, God, you actually want to change me. That means God wants to bring a thought that I'm not thinking right now. He wants to bring an understanding that I don't have right now. He wants to change me. I've seen all my friends and the neighbors around me. I've never thought about witnessing to them or winning them to Jesus. And God wants to put a new thought in perspective and go, I want to use you as a witness. Wow, new thought, right? I, 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 I think everything's fine in my life. I'm committed to you. I'm doing well. Someone comes and challenges me. Hey, hey, why don't you come to pre-service prayer? They say, well, I mean, I would, but I just, I'm busy and whatever. And I've got all these, and God goes, why don't I just change the way you think a little bit? Let me, let me change the way you're thinking about this. Let, let, let me change the way you think about your life and your patterns and your schedule and your habits and your abilities and all of these things. God wants to change the way that I think, and I need to let him change me. Let God transform you by changing the way you think. Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 5 says, Put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. But you used to do these things when your life was still part of the world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other. For you stripped off your old sinful nature and its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. I want, I want the band to come. He goes... I, you and I need to take off some things. And, and listen, he's not saying take it off and then next week put it back on again. He goes, I need to put off some things and not pick it up. And then I need to put on some things that are from Jesus. I, I need to put off my old thinking, put off my old reaction, put off what is the change that God wants to bring. Listen, the change that God wants to bring is different to whatever your life is right now. So if I already think, I'm at the maximum level of commitment to Jesus. If I think I'm already done obeying, I've obeyed anything that I need to obey. If I think, it's not that I'm condemned, but I've got to be open for God to change me. Because the minute I think that's it, I'm done, actually I've closed my heart to what God wants to do in and through my life. Are you with me today? It's the challenge of change. Some things need to go. God is going to give me the conviction and desire, but I need to yield myself to that process. Let me give you the last one today. It is the challenge of perseverance. It is the challenge of perseverance. Perseverance. He says, you and I, we're, we behold the glory of the Lord, right, with unveiled face. So there's this, I, I'm going to come again and again and again. I'm going to engage with God again and again. Don't just come to church. Come and say, God, speak to me. Don't just show up at a class, at a connect group. God, use me. God, do something new in me. Then the second challenge is, Lord, I'm willing for you to change me. I'm willing for you to put a new thought in my mind. I'm willing to think something I've never thought before in a way that I didn't think I needed to before. I'm willing to respond maybe in a way that's not normal in my life because, God, you're actually trying to change me. But then he says, you know what? I, I, I want to transform you from one degree of glory to another. And it's, there's a challenge of perseverance that I would be established in levels of maturity in my life and not go back. That God would bring a level of maturity in maybe how I relate with other people, and I don't want to go back. I want to persevere in that level. A level of maturity in love to someone else, and, and I don't want to go back. A level of maturity in faith, a level of maturity in conviction, in commitment, and I don't want to go back. You know, I think the problem 
for me today with, with a lot of how we approach growth in this day and age is that we think growth is new things. But a lot of uh, spiritual growth is not just trying to find new things. It is actually holding on to old things. <laughs> not a new teaching, not a new understanding. I, I mean, people run this all the time. Oh, oh you got to hear this, this, this preacher, this teacher. Wow, he has this new revelation. I got a news for you. I heard a Bible school professor tell me this. I believe it. He goes, if you found a new revelation, it's probably not true because all this revelation is thousands of years old in the Bible. And it's been the same all that while. You got some new teaching, some new, you think that new thing's going to fix you. No, no, no. I need to hold on to the things that God has done in my heart. And yeah, there are changes he brings. Yeah, there are new understandings that God gives. But growth is holding on to that. Philippians says in chapter 3, verse 16, only let us live up to what we have already attained. God, the work you did in me, Lord, you did a work of me being gener generous and teach me about generosity. Let me not go back to stinginess. Come on. God, God, you did a work in me of just being hospitable and welcoming people and hanging out with people. Let me not go back and just be isolated in any social media. God, you did a work in my heart releasing forgiveness to someone. Let me not go back to bitterness the next time something happens in my life. Let me live up to what I've attained. The New Living says we must hold on to the progress that we have already made. I like the, the message translation says, now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. That's great advice for some of you that get lost while you're driving a lot. Pastor Sala, listen to me. Now that we're on the right track, let us stay on it. Let us stay on the right track. Let us live up to what we've already attained. What, what is perseverance? Our, it is the determination that I am going to keep moving forward in what God has started in my life. I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to keep engaging. God, I'm going to persevere. I'm not going to back down from it. 1 Corinthians 15 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. I want you to think about that. Be steadfast, be immovable, persevering. God, I'm going to grow. I'm going to keep growing. Lord, I'm going to hold on to the work you did in my life and let you do a new work. God, I'm going to hold my position, stand my ground. I'm not shifting in my spirit. This is my commitment. I'm going to have a growth year this year. You're going to do a new thing in my heart this year. New thing in my attitude, a new thing in my commitments, a new thing in my emotions. God, be steadfast, be immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. So I'm going to resist convenient excuses. Oh, I, don't, I don't feel like it today. Oh, no, it's just not a good time for me right now. No, I'm going to resist those things that push back from the level God has brought me to. Well, you don't know what they did. You, you don't know what they said. Yeah, yeah, those are easy excuses, but no, I'm going to hold my ground. I'm not going to give in to current pressures in my life. I'm going to allow new fruit to grow. And this is a, a real work of trust in our heart. I have to trust that God's word actually works. I have to trust that what he's done in my life is going to bear fruit in the long run. I, I'm not going to grab on to the excuse. I'm not going to grab on and deviate in my life. I'm not going to grab onto something that pulls me away from the work he's done in my heart, pulls me away from my calling, pulls me away from what his word commands me to do, pulls me away from the fellowship he's called me into. I'm not going to grab onto those things. I'm actually going to hold on to his word, and I'm holding on to the work that he did in my heart because I trust and I believe, God, it's going to bear fruit in the long run. Your word still works. And perseverance is, man, I don't see it right now. I don't know when it's coming. I'm not sure when, it, when, but I actually believe in this. I'm gonna keep doing this because God, your word is going to work. It's going to bear fruit. And so this is the perspective. There is a challenge. Man, it is a challenge to be consistent. It is a challenge to let God change me. It is a challenge to persevere in these things, but, but we need to have a perspective that says, no, you know what? I'm determined, God, you call me to growth and I want to grow. I'm going up, not down. I'm going forward, come on somebody, and not back. This year is going to be a growth year. This year, God, I'm consistently engaging my heart. This year, I'm opening my life. God, speak a new thing. Show me, God, more of who you are. Put new things in my heart. I've never thought it. I've never been that way, but God, you're transforming me. And I'm going to hang on to what you've done in me. Are you with me today? 
Come on, if that's your heart, I want you to give Jesus a hand clap of praise today. And just, can you thank him for that work? Thank him for that work of growth of the Holy Spirit. 